these are spectacular artists, and I um, moved and believe everything that you guys are saying. And at the same time, what I feel like as a producer, we got a very practical problem with the way our theater is structured that is going to require a lot of movement to change. We have a theater that, in my lifetime, I've watched this change, that is now essentially uh, so expensive that for an audience, it is essentially limiting to a very narrow strata of our socioeconomic sphere who goes to Broadway, um, but indeed to most seriously in this country. And at the same time, we pay artists so terribly Off. that there is almost no such thing as an artist who can make their living in the theater anymore. And as a matter of fact, the theater, those of us who are producers, are former recovering producers, <laughs> You know, there's been this quiet no agreement that's been made, again, it changed in my lifetime, 20, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, this wasn't true, that we sort of um, have made the, um, the deal, the understanding that we're not going to support artists anymore. That if artists actually want to be supported, they're going to make movies, they're going to teach, they're going to do TV, they're going to, every once in a while, they'll, this extraordinary event of Lion King will happen, but that essentially as a field, this will be where artists dabble. So we've got the, 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 it exactly wrong. It's unaffordable for the audience and it's unaffordable for the artists. We right. don't have a system right. that actually supports a living, decent living, so that when the, the, the thing I deal with all the time with young artists who I train too, is say, look, how can they look ahead and say, I can imagine a life in this field, not of wealth, but of dignity. And to audiences, how are we gonna get audiences in when we are, um, you know, I, I mean, we won't go into premium seating policy, but because we, even, we just even have to talk about the average ticket price. It's absurd. It require, and it requires a major intervention, a change in the direction of the way our industry is going, if we're gonna make room for the visions that these women are describing, if we're gonna make room for the audience that actually has a chance to be transported by them. And that, I feel like, is a political job. I feel like it is a business job. It is constructing a different model, and of course it will require subsidy. Serious art in every era, in every society we know of, has always required subsidy. It has never, the market has never been sufficient for supporting the great art of an era. The question is, in a democracy, what is the appropriate place for that subsidy to come from? And that's why the NEA was started, because saying in monarchies, kings are supposed to start. In oligarchies, the nobility are supposed to support the, that's where patronage is supposed to come from. But you know what, in a democracy, the patronage should come from the people for art for the people. That's the appropriate thing. And we have, you know, but, but again, as, as I agree with you, Greg, we, we've felt this throughout this conference, but really the theme of the way that that civic union of our society has broken apart and we are now willing to accept that everything should have a price and that the people sh should get commodities who can pay for those commodities and those who can't, well fundamentally I guess they're the loser class.